So this question is a diagram question. Um, what we have here is a circle. What else do I see? I see some radii, so always pay attention to the radii. Then I have this like weird shape on the inside, right? Um, yeah, so there's a lot of just experience with questions like this that I'm going to use that maybe you wouldn't think of, but hopefully after I show you, it'll begin to make sense as to why I would do that. So let's read the question first. So it says point P is the center of the circle. So we see that point P in the figure shown. What is the value of X? We want this X degrees right here. So what can I do? So anytime I see a circle with a weird shape in it, I have learned to make it into a shape that's not weird, right? So just by drawing that one line there, I can look at this as a triangle here and a triangle there. Now, what do I know about these triangles? Well, I know that this is 25 degrees here. And if that's 25 degrees, this is also 25 degrees. How do I know that? Well, because I have a radius here and a radius there, and by default, radii have to be the same length, which means triangle APB is an isosceles triangle. But that would also mean that triangle APC, right, is also an isosceles triangle, right? So if this is 25 degrees, this is also 25 degrees. Now, what does that tell me about the entire angle here? Well, it's 25 plus 25, right? So that whole angle is 50 degrees. Now, how is that useful to figuring out what angle X is? Now, here we have another, um, I'm gonna show you two ways I can figure it out. Um, so one way is this angle, and that's, let's erase some things now and just put the 50 there since we now know how we got there. So this is 50. This angle, B, A, C, is called an inscribed angle. Hopefully you remember that term from geometry. If not, you know, put it in your notes. An inscribed angle is always half of the degree measurement of the arc that it creates, so arc BC. So if angle A is 50 degrees, that means arc BC is 100 degrees, right? Because that inscribed angle is always half of the degree measurement of the arc that it creates, right? It creates this arc. Now, why is that useful? That's useful because now when I take a look at angle X, angle X is what we call a central angle. The central angle is always equal to the arc that it creates. And that would tell me that X equals 100. Okay, so there's our answer. Now, as promised, another way to treat this is, again, like I mentioned earlier, I like to turn these things into shapes that I can deal with. So I put that line back there. Again, I know that that's 25 because I was told that. I know that's 25 because these are two, these are isosceles, or this is an isosceles triangle. So if this is 25 degrees here, and this is 25 degrees here, that's 50 degrees, that would mean that this angle here, right, the top of that triangle, is, or the obtuse angle in that triangle, must be 130. Because, right, all three angles must add up to 180. And then the same thing would happen here, right? The 25 we already saw before, the 25 they gave us, 50 is what those two angles add up to, which means this angle here would have to be 130. So I love to do this because it, once you see it, it's hard to unsee it. When I make the angle symbol here with this red, you can see that between the black and the red, I just made a full circle. Now that full circle we know has to be 360 degrees. Now how much of that do we have? Well, we have 130, we have another 130, Right? So 130 plus 130 is 260, leaving us with this angle having to be 100 degrees. So that's another way to find it. I kind of like that way better because that way really deals with only knowing to turn weird shapes in circles into shapes that you know, like squares, triangles, rectangles. Right, So having this weird shape here, if you just keep that strategy in mind, you know for the next time that you see something like this, that, hey, if I just draw this line here, I just made two isosceles triangles, and there's a bunch of things that I can now do. Versus the way I initially did it here, which was, you have to remember this is called an inscribed angle. You have to remember that it's half of this arc over here, 
right? And there's nothing wrong with remembering that, but it's just a little extra, right? So remembering isosceles triangles is something that you should definitely know for this test. Um, so just knowing that helps you to answer this question without learning or having to like memorize um, more geometry with regard to inscribed angles and central angles and arcs.